Hey guys, over the last couple of years, I've become a lot more mindful of how I say things and what exactly I'm saying. And I've consciously decided to no longer use certain words or phrases. It all started a couple of years ago, I think it must have been four or five. And I slowly but surely added words to the list and simply replaced them with alternatives that I believe are better, more positive, that feel more like myself. And in today's video I figured why not share this with you because I do think that it's really important to be mindful of one's speech and what those very words that you utter every day can do to other people and how they in turn can affect yourself. So let's get into the video. The first phrase is I hate. I find I hate really loaded with negative feelings and emotions and I refrain from using it at all times. I am usually quick to use an alternative such as I choose not to or I prefer or I choose this and that. I hate I found to be Quite simply, just plain negative. And I'm a lot happier as a result of it. The next phrase is I have to. Truth be told, there is nothing that I or anyone really has to do if we don't want to. Of course, if we don't do certain things, there might be penalties. But most likely in your everyday life, Things that you don't do are not going to get you killed. I used to say, oh, I have to study, I have to learn. I no longer put it that way. Instead, I simply say, oh, I choose to do this instead of this, or I really want to do this or that. And I've completely eliminated the use of the phrase, I have to. It doesn't really align with my values. I don't believe that I have to do anything and for this reason I no longer use it. I can't. I can't is one of those phrases that makes me feel really weak. I can't do this. I can't do that. Instead, in most cases, it's not my inability to do something, but it's usually down to personal preferences. Actually, I choose not to do this or I would prefer to do this. It's not that I can't, it's oftentimes that I simply choose not to. Previously, I used to think it a lot in my thoughts. Oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do that. And no longer doing that has given me back my power, my natural abilities, and has given me simply a lot of strength. And while I previously had that strength and power, I used phrases such as I can't, which basically drew the power out of me, if that makes any sense. Busy. Um, busy is one of those words that I honestly don't really grasp. I've used it in the past, but I refrain from using it now because busy is something that I honestly don't want to be. Busy, I associate with chaos, having a lot of things to do, not having enough time. I like to do things at my own pace. I prefer to do things one after the other. I like to give my full attention to something and then to something else and to something else. I prefer not to be rushed or in a sort of hectic state. And that's why I choose to no longer use the word busy. And whenever people utter that very word in my presence, then I always make a point to try, I mean, that's all I can really do, to shift the conversation to something a little more meaningful with a little more substance because I think the word itself is often used as a filler word of sorts. Well, not really filler word, but something to represent loads of things versus you could simply be more precise and say, I choose to do those things or I choose to do those things but just saying oh I'm busy I, I can't can't do first day doesn't really mean all that much. Now on to a German phrase. The phrase is Grüß Gott. Grüß Gott means translated into the English language greet God. Growing up 
people around me used to say that. Imagine you walk down the street, you see someone you know, you are not really close to them, but you know them, let's say it's your neighbor, and you would pass by your neighbor and would simply say, oh, Chris Scott. You might start a conversation, you might not start a conversation, but you would say Chris Scott, especially if you grew up on the countryside. Although I don't want to generalize, this is my personal experience, on the countryside, I found this to be more commonly used than when I moved to the capital city, where it wasn't used as much. And the majority of people that I met who used Grüß Gott and still use it today were of an older generation, but I hardly met anyone my age who used Grüß Gott with people that were their age, if that makes sense. And there was one day that I remember vividly where I said to my sister, Hey, Julia, I'm not religious. I, I'm not of faith. Why would I say this to people? Because that would imply that I am in fact religious. And I sat down and consciously decided, okay, I'm, I'm no longer going to use this word. In the beginning, it was really, really difficult, as silly as this may sound. But then eventually I got the ball rolling and now obviously I don't even think about it anymore. When I moved to the UK, whenever someone sneezed, I said, bless you. I wasn't, honestly, wasn't thinking much about it. And then I got to the yes and I said, bless you. And then one day I stood there and thought to myself, hey, why do you say bless you? Because blessing someone means making something or someone holy by saying a special prayer. I'm not a faith. And blessing someone, therefore, had no meaning to me and probably very little meaning to the other person if it's coming from me and they know that I'm not a fake. In Austria, whenever someone sneezes, a very common term that people say is Gesundheit. And Gesundheit simply means health. So I talked to a friend and she said, well, yeah, some people use Gesundheit even in New York City. And so I figured, okay. I'm gonna use this. In the beginning it was really awkward. Obviously no one really knows what I'm talking about, only some people do. But I still utter that very word every single time someone sneezes and the more I do, the more comfortable I feel with saying that. These were all the words and phrases that I no longer use, that I refrain from using at all times. And if you take anything from this video, then I would want that to be that try to be very deliberate in your speech. Try to really think through what it is that you're saying. And I'm not saying that most people don't think about what they're saying, but all I want to say is that be very mindful of what you're saying and how you're saying things. Of course, person to person, but also on the internet. I think we all could be a little more mindful of our speech in personal interactions, but also in interactions online. You never really know how words can affect someone. And given that we think a whole lot during the day, it's also really important to use words that empower you and to refrain from using words that weaken you. Constantly saying things such as I hate, I can't, I'm busy, doesn't really empower me. Instead, I choose to use words with a more positive meaning that are more uplifting. And you may say I'm all Pollyanna about it, but for me it's really just being more mindful about what I say, and what I choose not to say. I hope this has given you some ideas and thoughts. Um, I didn't really plan for this video. I simply just wrote the phrases and words down that I no longer use and simply wanted to see what comes out of my mouth when filming this. I hope you've gotten a little something something out of this video and I hope you enjoyed. Have a lovely day and see you guys next time.